If someone told you to paint the sky of a perfect day, what would it look like? To me, a clear blue sky is how a perfect day ought to be. Kind of like how my grades ought to be all A's, how my leisure time ought to be spent productively, and how I ought to live each day as if it's preparing me to become this perfect 21st century woman that I ought to become. In the same way that I drew my ideal perfect day with a clear blue sky, I mentally drew my ideal future self as a woman who breaks traditional gender norms, one who climbs the social ladder to success, shoulder to shoulder with men, not one who, oh, I don't know, competed in traditional beauty pageants. Obviously, a lot has changed since then. So let me share with you three phases in my life that reflect the way I drew my expectations for myself the way I learned to paint a prettier sky. My first phase starts in elementary school in the US. Back then, I was the color book painter with a crazy imagination. Color keys and outlines were only light suggestions. I drew pink skies and added bunny shaped clouds that rang gooey gumdrops. I also had two role models at that time, Disney Princess Belle and my mom. I used to want to become more like the former, but as I progressed through elementary school, I decided that I want to be more like the latter. Anywho, there was this one time when my classmates and I were asked to present on the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I immediately imagined my mom. And when my turn came, I proudly stated, I want to be a good stay at home mom. Now, you know you've said something wrong when the classroom falls collectively silent. I remember my teacher coming up to me after that class and she told me how intelligent I was and how much potential I had, that I should probably keep my mind open to other possibilities. I also remember my friends coming up to me and asking me if stay at home mom was what my parents had told me to become and if that was the norm in Japanese households. Now, I know they had no ill intentions because they all approached me with eyes not necessarily of disapproval, but one of curiosity and pity. But as a Japanese minority growing up in my school, I was really afraid of that feeling. Never again did I answer stay at home mom to the infamous question. Instead, I went with a doctor. And a lot of people seem to like that better. It was as if I had suddenly noticed that I was the only one painting a pink sky. Everyone else had painted it blue all along. And from that day on, I painted my skies blue too. Now, I'm not saying that this first experience was a bad one, because honestly, it wasn't. It forced me to really see the world around me for its true colors, and to acknowledge my identity as a girl growing up in 21st century society one that offered me opportunities that my predecessors didn't have. It wasn't so much the experience itself, but the way I perceived it that became a little problematic. Since that day, I completely shut out the option of becoming a stay-at-home mom. It's like I no longer took the color keys and outlines in color books as light suggestions, but as rule of law. I associated blue skies as right and pink skies as wrong. I associated stay-at-home moms with backwardness and doctors with successfulness. I associated pageant girls with old traditions and female entrepreneurs with progressiveness. It was as if I had finished painting the canvas of the world in permanent ink. The sky was stained blue and nothing could make me believe otherwise. My second phase starts with this perfectly set mental painting of how things ought to be. It was during this time that I moved to Japan for university, and the notion that I had moved to a comparatively conservative country made me very protective of my independence as a woman. I became hostile to comments regarding just my feminine qualities, and became quite competitive with my male colleagues and classmates. I shut out my relatives when they mentioned the term settle down or start a family. I continuously pushed myself toward this ideal version of me. And as I felt myself getting tired of pushing myself, I noticed that I had simply just switched to dragging. 
and then hit quarantine. With time to spare stuck in the house, I began scavenging through my grandma's old family photos, where I encountered pictures of my mom in her 20s, of her learning the traditional tea ceremony, of her singing on stage, of her competing in a beauty pageant, and of her holding her firstborn baby. From there, she would become a shufu, or a housewife in Japanese. Of course, none of these things were on my agenda for things I ought to do to become a successful woman. But far from being disappointed in my mom's story, I was so proud. My grandma told me that my mom was a free spirit, doing everything she loved with enthusiasm. I admired her contagious smile in every picture, her ability to open her mind to so many experiences, her courage to paint her own path, her own colorful horizons, never stained by others' expectations. But how could someone who strayed so far from my visualized path of success be my greatest role model? Should she even be my greatest role model? And I couldn't help but wonder, must every perfect day have a clear blue sky? Soon after, as if on cue, I encountered an opportunity to compete in the Miss World Japan Beauty Contest. Now I had the minimum qualifications and I was quite interested, especially after seeing my mom's pictures. The only thing that was stopping me was this assumption that competing in a beauty pageant went against my more serious ambition. That mental barrier. What if exposing my femininity made others take me less seriously at school or at my workplace? Would the bedazzled dress and sweet curls weaken my image as this strong, independent 21st century woman? Indeed, entering a pageant went against my agenda for prepping myself into the 21st century woman that I needed to become. But as I was preparing myself to say no to this opportunity, I stopped and wondered, where were these fears even coming from? I mean, how could I judge a group of girls I hadn't even met before? A competition I hadn't even participated in. Obviously, I was okay with showing off chiseled muscles on female bodybuilders. So why not feminine curves on pageant girls and dresses? Did I subconsciously associate traditional images of femininity with weakness and that of masculinity with strength? Maybe my assumptions about how a woman ought to be was not complete. Maybe the perfect sky wasn't necessarily blue. For the first time in a while, I contemplated whether I should paint over my assumptions, paint over that clear blue sky, stray away from the perfect painting of myself. Why not give it a try? And thus, we enter my third and final episode, Miss World Japan 2020 Finals. At first, as I had expected, I got mixed reactions. Some of my close friends confessed to me that they couldn't support my decision to take part in a competition that seemed to overly glamorize external feminine beauty. And perhaps many more judged silently. It was as if I was in that classroom again, centered at the apex of pity and disappointment. And at first, I got scared. I really started to regret this personal experiment. But I didn't back down, and I'm glad I didn't. I learned so much from my fellow contestants who were finding meaningful success in their own unique shades. One girl used her modeling platform to spread sign language. Another was a glamorous presenter who shared Japanese culture. They were leaders in society, not by succeeding in traditionally masculine roles, but by using their feminine identity and beauty as an advantage. And there I was having unfairly judged them. There I was, trying so hard to mask my colorful femininity in order to fit in. I especially came to identify with the contest's motto of beauty with a purpose. This was the key point. I needed to stop obsessing over who I ought to be in the future and focus on who I already am in the present. Stop waiting for that perfect sunny day and enjoy the sound of raindrops beating against the windows. I needed to use what I have now to make an impact on the very moment I live in. To my honor, after finding my own beauty with a purpose and my colorful identity, I was crowned Miss World Japan 2020 runner-up. But I left with a lot more than a trophy that night. I had regained my ability 
to see a sky that wasn't strictly blue. Of course, the sky being blue is an undeniable reality, just like how deep morals and virtues will always be at our base. However, on top of the blue base, we're allowed to add spontaneous splatters of yellow at the break of dawn, when life seems a little dull. When we learn new things or encounter unexpected opportunities, we should keep our minds open to adapt accordingly, adding unpredictable swirls of clouds here and there. Because our picture-perfect plans for the future, the painting with the perfectly clear blue sky, isn't going to do our creativity its justice. Let's take color keys and outlines as light suggestions. Let's experiment outside the comfortable blue sky. Let's see beyond the assumptions about the world that keep us from understanding something new. The choice is yours. What color will your sky be?